Hi guys. So today's video is going to be a combination of both a non-spoiler review for the book Ash Princess as well as a spoilery chat at the end. So this is the first book in a series. It's written by Laura Sebastian and it follows a girl named Theodosia who was the heir to the throne of a kingdom that was conquered. The Kaiser who conquered her kingdom killed the rest of her family. They killed a lot of her people, but they chose to keep her alive so they could use her against her own people. If her own people try to rebel or if they have riots of any kind, they publicly whip her. When we first meet our main character, she's a very broken individual. She has had her own identity essentially beaten out of her and she's extremely submissive to the Kaiser because she just wants to avoid being punished. However, due to some fairly disturbing things that happen right at the beginning of the book, she kind of opens her eyes and realizes that she's done. She is done being this puppet that is being used and she really wants to do what she can to finally stop it and possibly free the people that are still being held under the Kaiser's rule. The entire book is in first person in single point of view. There is no other point of view but Theodosia's and because she has had her own identity beaten out of her so much, she does kind of go back and forth between feeling like she is two different people. She feels like she is this heir to the throne who has to do what she can to be a queen to her people who need her and then she also feels like she's this nobody who's just trying to avoid being hurt. She also has this sense that she hasn't had it any worse than anyone else. In fact, she thinks that she has had it so much better than all of her other people because many of the people are being used in the mines and they are being worked to death so that this kingdom that has conquered them can profit. I don't know that everybody is going to connect with this particular personality trait, but I know I did especially. I just found it to be a realistic trait and it definitely drew me to the character a lot. Also, despite the fact that we are with Theodosia the entire time, I still thought the author did a pretty good job of the other characters having pretty distinct personalities or having their own struggles. And I actually found myself like really frustrated at certain characters or sometimes I'd be like wait but no like they're just people too and so I would go back and forth and be frustrated in some ways and be like yeah kill that person and then other times I'd be like but wait maybe they're not so bad. The writing style itself is quite bleak. I think if any of you have ever read Red Rising or if you have read the An Ember in the Ashes series. It's got a similar feel because it's present tense first person and we're dealing with characters that are that are going through a lot and who are trying to go up against people that have more power than them and their situation is very bleak so the writing is very bleak. Now getting into the spoiler-y spoiler -y portion of the video because I need to talk some spoilers. All right so I'm just gonna talk about Theodosia for a second. I really enjoyed Theodosia pretty much the entire time. She could have had the opportunity to just walk away from all of that and have a squeaky clean life and be a little happier if she had just accepted Blaze's offer at the beginning, and she didn't. So I was like, cool, you're kind of a boss for that. But at the end, at the end, when she tells Soren, so okay, I'll get into Soren in a second because I feel like I need to dedicate some time to talking about Soren. But when she is talking to Soren at the end, after she's after she's had him like bound up and she looks to him and she's like every time I see you I see your father and I was like uh you bad word for women that I'm not gonna say I was so mad at her when I got to that part because she just was doing that because she feels like she needs to put this wall up between them because he's technically the enemy and people just aren't going to be cool with her being in love with the enemy I kind of get it and I'm sort of I sort of respect it, but I really liked Soren. What really kind of bugged me though about all of the I'm mad at Soren except for I'm not mad at Soren, her back and forth feelings for Soren. Uh, what bugged me was Soren is in the same boat as her because at the beginning of the book, she has to kill her own dad because the Kaiser has a lot of power, right? So when she, when he tells her like, hey, the order to use the berserks, berserkers, when that was his order. I didn't want to do it. She's like, but it was your order. You did do it. And you are you have blood on your hands. And I'm like, so do you. you. Have your own dad's blood on your hands. She kind of acknowledges this a little bit. She sort of has a little bit of a thought thinking like, I guess I do too. But it was a little too late. I don't know. I just feel like if you're unsure and if you're having some self-reflection and you're realizing, hey, I've done some bad things too. We've all done some bad things because the Kaiser's terrible. If you're having these kinds of thoughts and also you're kind of sort of in love with the dude, I feel like you don't tell him, 
that person that is responsible for all of our pain, who you feel miserable having to be the son of, yeah, every time I look at you, I see that guy. I just felt for Soren the entire book. I'm actually really, really wondering if you guys, am I alone in that? Am I the only person, am I disturbed to, to feel for the guy? He's naturally inclined to be nice and good and decent. And he's raised by this monster, this despicable person that happens to have a ton of power. And just like Theodosia, he doesn't really have a choice. When Theodosia is presented and Pelio, and she's told she has to kill the guy, and she does, what else is she supposed to do? I just felt like that was Soren's whole life. That part when he's confessing everything that happened uh, with those islands, and she's thinking, no, 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 you don't get to feel bad for this, you don't get to feel bad for this, because she, she doesn't want to kill him, but she wants to be able to do it. She wants to see him as the bad guy so that she can kill him. And she thinks like, no, if he tells me what he's done and he feels bad about it, then it's going to make it so much harder because I'm going to see him more as a person and I'm going to see him more as a decent person. And she holds the knife up to him and he tells her like, hey, just a little bit lower. Gosh darn it, that part. That's why I like the guy because I don't, I don't like him because he's self-loathing and he hates himself, but because... He just really reflects on all the terrible things he's had to do. It's not like he's just accepted them and been like, oh, well, I guess I had to. Let's talk about somebody I didn't like, and that would be Cress. Did anybody else hate that chick? When they're like, you gotta kill her, she's like, but I can't. At first I was on Theodosia's side. At first I was like, yeah, that's kind of messed up. Does, does Cress really have to die? She's not that bad. And then when that chick goes and confronts her with their little coffee, and she's just like, I know you sent this letter, to Thorin and also I know everything you've done and don't do it again also be grateful that the Kaiser is going to marry you and probably do terrible things to you man I feel like I could feel the tension in that scene by the way that scene was awesome for the fact that it was written in like a oh shoot like she got caught kind of way so that scene I thought was done really well but man when that happened I was like oh Chris you done wrote your death sentence I absolutely loved though I'm gonna say her wrong. I'm gonna say her name wrong. Elpis, Elpis. I I don't know how to say her name. The little girl that's 13 that wants to be a spy. Oh man, when that girl took the poison and just drank it all, so they couldn't keep questioning Theodosia by using her. That was the coolest. I feel like that was one of the coolest deaths I've ever like mic drop. Like I'm going out in an amazing way. I just feel like this series better end with them like singing songs about that little girl and her going down in history. As far as the other side characters like Blaze and Heron and the one girl's name that I forget, the, the girl with the blue hair. Um, I do hope we get more of those two uh, other characters maybe in the next book. Blaze, I don't know how I feel about Blaze currently because for a while, okay, there's a little bit of love triangle in this book, but I don't, think I ever was like, oh, Blaze, like, be with Blaze, be with Blaze. I don't know that I'm like Team Thorn or Team Blaze when it comes to the romantic part of things. I just liked Thorn better. But with Blaze, I don't know. Like, his mind story was sad, but when he was like, you're not going to want to hear it, you're not going to want to hear it, I was like, what happened to you? And then what happened to him was like, I had to spend some time in a cell. Not that it wasn't terrible, but I was like, girl just got 20 lashings in front of a bunch of people. Your story's not that bad. All right, I need to wrap this up. So I'll say one more little spoilery thing. The twist at the end of the book where it turned out that Dragon's Bane was her mother's twin, that um, was fine. It was interesting. Uh, and I think I'm very interested to see where the next book is going to pick up. But as far as her, the Dragon's Bane being her mom's twin, I was just like, oh, all right. I mean, that's interesting, I guess. Anyway, that's it for my review and spoiler chat for Ash Princess. I'm very curious, for those of you who have read it, what were your thoughts on it? Did you love the book? Did you hate the book? As always though, thanks so much for watching. Happy reading and I'll see you later. Bye.